Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Hayes. In this series of videos, we're helping you guys prepare for the EC6 Subject Core Exam as you prepare to become a Texas educator. Right now we're focusing on science, but more specifically in this episode, we're looking at electricity coming up next. Okay, if this is the first episode you've seen in this series and you'd like to check out my past or future episodes, you can click on this YouTube card here in the corner. That will take you to my playlist. That playlist will have all the episodes in the order they were taught and by topic so you can drill down to what is most important to you. Now, if you cannot see the card I pointed to because your browser or viewer you're watching this video on doesn't support YouTube cards, you can check the description below. I will have a link there as well. Also, check the description for additional resources such as the Big Yellow Book. I highly recommend this. I have no connection at all with the author or publisher. However, as I was preparing to do this series, this is a book that comes up time and time again from those of you guys that are successful on the exam. So I encourage you guys to get that. I also have purchased it for myself. I use it oftentimes to help guide the direction in these videos and to stay really close on content. Now, real quick shout out. I've had a few comments here recently on my episodes. So out there to Jennifer Majors and Peter G. Thanks for commenting recently. They let me know that my videos are helping. And Peter, you gave a suggestion on uh, maybe having some uh, questions related to the content and the videos. And so I commented back to you to let you know that's kind of my plan after the um, topics of science is to have a few videos that cover a series of questions related to the topics I've covered. So I'll be checking for that in the future. And thanks for your suggestion. It's something I've been mulling around and you've just kind of solidified that idea in my mind. So. I'm going to probably pursue that, and I give you credit for really uh, pushing that forward, and uh, we'll see that in a few episodes that I'm nearly done with science. I think I have about three or four more episodes, and then we'll be wrapping up with a few questions. So thanks, Peter, for your suggestion. Um, so we're going to put five minutes up here on the clock, and once that ticks down to zero, we'll do a quick wrap-up, and then uh, we'll pick up in the next episode where we left off in this one. So let's go ahead and get started with five minutes on the clock. So we're talking about electricity, and I want to first start off with a topic you're familiar with, and that is static electricity. So you've probably been familiar with this, such as uh, when you were a child, or if you have children where you take a balloon, you blow it up, you rub it against your hair, and then you stick it to the wall. So what's happening is, um, you can check out my other episode on matter, I talk a little bit more about atoms, but everything is made of atoms, all matter is made of atoms, and um, so your hair is no exception. So when you take a balloon and you rub it against your hair, you're stripping off electrons, which are negatively charged particles of the atom that makes up your hair, onto the balloon. This makes the balloon uh, negative in nature. So when you touch it to the wall, the wall has a, uh, a neutral charge, but because it is somewhat positive, it attracts itself to the balloon, allowing the balloon's lightness to be able to be uh, stuck to the wall like magic. You see the same thing happen when you rub your uh, uh, feet against the carpet. If you have socks on, it's rubbing off electrons onto your feet. You become negatively, negatively charged. You touch your friend and a, and a charge uh, goes from you to them to try to equalize or when you touch a doorknob. Uh, we see this in nature all the time when we see lightning storms. This is a result of cloud building through cumulonimbus clouds. As they start to get large, they start to develop more of a negative charge. When those clouds become close to the ground, uh, there is a positive charge earth with the negative charge clouds. Uh, they tend to touch one another uh, with, the, with the charges, creating a lightning strike. Uh, we also see this in cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning whenever clouds pass one another. So let's talk about um, electric current. Now electric current is a flow of electrons through a conductor. We'll talk about a conductor here in just a moment. But there's two types of electricity, direct current and alternating current. Now direct current was really um, started to be put together in a larger fashion with Thomas Edison. You've heard of him. He invented the light bulb. Now he realized the need for electricity in the home and so he started developing these large um, batteries that were capable of actually powering homes. Uh, however, Nikola Tesla came along and created an alternating current through a generator. So the difference is in direct current, uh, you have two negative or a negative and positive side on a battery that's got a chemical content that creates these electron uh, flows. So as you make a connection between the negative and positive, the electrons flow in one direction. So it's a direct current. Now Nikola Tesla created a generator where uh, you take a magnet and run it around a copper coil or vice versa and you end up exciting the electrons within the, uh, within the copper uh, creating this uh, alternating current so the electrons are kind of vibrating back and forth. In the United States we have a frequency of 60 Hertz which means that these electrons are vibrating at 60 times per second and uh, it flickers lights but our, our eyes and our brain can't recognize that because it happens too fast. So alternating current is what we typically use in uh, most 
household and commercial uses. However, we still use direct current in things that take batteries such as your cars, flashlights, and electronics. So let's talk about uh, series circuits. You're familiar with a series circuit if you've ever used uh, older um, Christmas lights. That means that the electric current is flowing in a series around the bulbs into the next bulb and so on. So when one bulb goes out, they all go out. However, a parallel circuit means there's an alternate path uh, to actually have that circuit go around. So if the light bulb goes out, the electricity can still flow to the next object in line. So we see more modern Christmas lights develop this way. So if you lose one Christmas light, they don't all go out. Now let's talk about, uh, about conductors. Now conductors allow the flow of electricity. These are typically metal. We normally use copper because it's the least expensive that is still a good conductor. However, copper prices are rising because the need for electrons or elect electricity around the world is growing, putting a, um, a high demand on copper. Now, silver and gold and platinum are even better conductors of electricity. However, they are more expensive and we see them used in small areas of higher end electronics. Now, we talked about parallel circuits. Now, there's also closed circuits, which we didn't talk about, which a closed circuit just means that we have uh, flipped on a switch to allow the flow of electricity. This happens whenever you turn on a light switch in your home. An open circuit would be like when we turn off the switch, it creates the circuit to be open where the flow can no longer travel through it. Now, insulators, on the other hand, do not allow the flow of electricity. These would be things like glass, uh, wood, um, rubber, and plastic. That's why we insulate cords and other electronics with plastic and rubber so it doesn't electrocute us. Now electromagnetism is simply taking a wire and running it around a uh, say a nail and then we uh, connect both ends to um, an electrical source and that generates a, a electric current which magnetizes the nail. We see this in a high use when it comes to junkyards picking up cars with a really big electromagnet. Okay so let's kind of see how we're doing on time. Man that was perfect. So um, Anyway, in conclusion, remember electricity has some major components, direct current, alternating current. We have conductors, um, insulators. Uh, we, have co um, we have different types of circuits, uh, series circuits, parallel circuits, and closed circuits. And then we also have open and closed circuits. I think I just said closed a minute ago. Anyway, that wraps it up for this video. I appreciate you guys that commented like I mentioned earlier. If you enjoy these videos, please comment below, especially if you pass your EC6 exam. Please take time to come back and comment and let me know that um, you have passed and I will do a shout out to you in my next video. So to you future educators, congratulations for embarking on this field. I've uh, been in it since 2003. I truly love it. I've taught middle school. My wife, daughter, and son are all teachers and uh, right now I'm an elementary uh, principal and I've actually uh, taken on a, a principal position for next year for pre-k through 12th grade in a smaller town outside of Amarillo. So I'm looking forward to next year as well. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and like and also click the notification bell to let you know when the next episode releases. We'll see you next time on Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel.